So what's the big deal about bend back flies? I must admit, I've seen quite a few of these, this type of fly which is either poorly or improperly tied. If done correctly, they are virtually weedless. However, if they are tied incorrectly, you'll be lucky to hook a fish at all. Back in the day, Tamco manufactured a pre-bent hook I believe was called the 911S. It was the perfect hook. Sharp out of the box, heavy duty forged stainless steel, it had a large ring eye, and it came in many sizes. More importantly, it had the correct bend geometrically. You see, the bend in the hook is the most important part of a properly tied bend back fly. This video is inspired by just that. How do you make the correct bend in a hook? First, let's talk about the different types of hooks, lengths of shanks, and what they are constructed from. They don't have to be made of stainless steel. Any bronze or plated hook with a decent sized wire diameter that isn't forged, which is very important, should work. I personally use Mustad 34007 2X shank and Mustad 34011 3X shank hooks for most of my saltwater bendback flies. I work in sizes from number 4 all the way up to number 3 out hooks. So what is the correct bend geometry and why is it so damn important? Look at the diagram of both the long and short shanked properly bent hooks. If you were to draw a straight line from the bent portion of the hook, the line will point to the back of the gape of the hook. If you were to bend the hook more extremely, once it is tied to the tip of the geometry, that is the angle of attack to stick it in the fish, is such that it will slide right out of the fish's mouth. Not only is it fish proof, but it is weed proof as well. This is why the bend back has such an ill-gotten reputation with some anglers. Next let's speak of how I bend the hook. I have a pair of smooth jawed pliers. These are fairly short in length and about 1 8 inch wide. Grasping the hook firmly across the jaws with the hook eye exposed and the hook point in the up position, push down firmly on the shank of the hook with your thumb. It takes a bit of practice, but don't overbend the hook. Correcting an overbent hook can lead to fatigue in the wire. Every now and then I actually break a hook while bending it. That's to be expected. Don't automatically think that this weakens all of your hooks. I've never broken one of these fishing. Eyeball the bend and draw an imaginary line towards the gape of the hook. Do you notice that the long shank hooks require much less bend due to their length? As you've seen in some of the bend back flies I've displayed, there is vast room for being creative with your own flies. I would like to add some pointers and explain why I do it this way. Shown here is a sample of a bendback fly which I tied the body only. Note that the body braid tinsel is wrapped clear back and up the gape of the hook part way. I should add that there is a single strand of 35,000 sled wire tied beneath the body braid along the length of the shank of the hook. This swims level unlike the jigging action of a Klauser minnow, yet sinks well. Now look at the same fly completed with the wing. Notice that the entire hook shank is camouflaged up to the wing. Perhaps I'm just being anal, but I like to cover up the hook if I can. Here's another example of the same in a Prince of Tides bendback. The body extends up to the fly wing. This is a fly which I will be demonstrating the construction of in another YouTube video. Watch for it. One final point I wish to make is do not overdress the wing of the bendback. Sparse use of wing materials is prudent. You have to allow for the fish's capacity to hook themselves. I hope that this video has been helpful in your understanding of what a bendback fly is and how it's constructed. If you have any comments or questions regarding this or the mangrove coast fly fishers, 
an FFF charter club here in beautiful Sarasota, Florida, contact us at mangrovecoastflyfishers at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.